It's just a huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing Dr. Stephen Shu, PhD. He is the founder and chairman of Camelix, a professor of oral biology and diagnostic. He's a tenured professor of oral biology and diagnostic sciences at the Dental College of Georgia, a world-renowned expert in green tea polyphenol research, and inventor of green tea technology-derived products and medications which treat dry mouth, dandruff, hair loss, cold sores, and viral infections with natural ingredients. Dr. Shu was awarded seven patents on novel technologies targeting autoimmune disease, herpes simplex virus, virus-induced infections, and salivary disease functions like xerostemia. Dr. Shu has been selected as a TED speaker. Uh, I watched that again today. That's why I called him to be on the show. Um, you have to watch his TED talk. It's just amazing. I hope he goes over some of his TED talk today. He received the International Association for Dental Research with the IADR for his GSK Innovation and Oral Care Award in 2011. In 2015, he received the Georgia Bio Innovation Award for his unique inventions. Um, he received the Oral Discoveries and Invention Award from the Georgia Dental Association. Dr. Shu has been invited to appear on numerous TV and radio podcast programs, frequently invited to international conferences as a keynote speaker. He earned a bachelor's degree in biochemistry from Wuhan University in the city of Wuhan, China, after a six-year forced labor experience in rural farm in China. After moving to the United States, he received a master's of arts degree in molecular biology from Mont. Montclair State University in New Jersey and a PhD in cell biology and anatomy from the University of Cincinnati College of Medicine. He completed a postdoctoral fellowship at Memorial Sloan Keating Cancer Center in New York City before a career change to television. During the four years as a television commentator and sports anchor for ESPN International, Dr. Shu taught at the National University of Singapore as a lecturer. In 98, he received the Ruth L. Kirstein Research Award from the National Cancer Institute and conducted cancer research at New York University School of Medicine. Dr. Shu joined the Augusta University, formerly known as the Medical College Georgia, in 99 and serves as course director for nutrition and course director for biochemistry in the Department of Oral Biology and Diagnostic Services. He has joint appointments in the Institute of Molecular Medicine and Genetics and the grad school. He is former president of the Georgia chapter of the American Association for Dental Research and a member of the American Association of Cancer Research and the International Association for Dental Research. He has published more than 70 research articles in peer-reviewed scientific journals, eight books or chapters, has presented his research findings at scientific meetings worldwide, as well as lectured for CE courses to dentists, hygienists, and pharmacists. He has served as a reviewer of grant applications for the NIH, the Department of Defense, the National University of Singapore, and for numerous scientific journals. Dr. Shu's research has been funded by the NIH and the U.S. Department of Defense. IADR, Georgia Research Alliance, among other organizations. He has collaborated with researchers representing the fields of oral biology and maxillofacial pathology, dermatology, virology, and molecular biology from the universities in the United States, China, and Japan. He and his wife, Tracy, live in Evans, Georgia, with their sons, Alexander and Andrew. My gosh, I'm going to say you are the smartest person I've ever had come on my show. Thank you so much so much for coming on the show today to talk to all these dentists and hygienists commuting to work. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Nice to be here. Thank you for the introduction. My gosh, your TED talk. I mean, um, I, I think people, um, I, I think people, um, especially these young kids, they, they don't realize the cultural revolution. You lived through there. I don't know if you wanted to start with that, but um, Absolutely, yes. How, so start with the cultural revolution because so many kids uh, they, they, they don't even know about it. Yeah, the Cultural Revolution actually started uh, in 1966. That's quite a long time ago. 1966? Uh, 1966. Okay. Yeah, at that time, I was a, I just became a teenager. Just became a teenager. So I actually witnessed the, the entire episode of um, this chaos, tragedy, and all these kind of uh, uh, broken families and the people, so many people died and persecuted. So my family was one of them. My family, uh, due to the background, because my, my father came back from 
United States to China. He went back to China uh, because my uh, grandpa uh, was was ill, and then uh, he was trapped in China and uh, never uh, had had a chance to to uh, uh, get out of the country. So at that time, my my father was accused as a CIA spy. So my family was totally uh, turned upside down, and uh, therefore I was not given any uh, uh, education opportunity. So after um, the middle school, I was forced to go to a labor camp they called uh, re-education, re-educate. You know? So I went uh, to the labor camp uh, when I was 16, and uh, all the way till uh, I was almost 23 before uh, the revolution was over in 1960. Uh, 76. Therefore, I could have um, opportunity to go to college, and then so I tried hard, and then eventually I get into Wuhan University, I'm passing the uh, uh, college entrance exam, and uh, so that's that's what I started, and then uh, eventually become what I am right now. <laughs> um, the, the the how many how many people actually died? Do you think in the Cultural Revolution? Uh, for me, you know, since since I was um, like 11, 12 years old, I have witnessed witnessed a lot of people committing suicide, persecuted. They couldn't take any more, and also um, for people counter revolutionary that they were just um, you know brought to somewhere and have a big meeting and get shot. You know, after that by the uh, the squad of the uh, execution squad. So I, I witnessed uh, so many of them, and also there there were some uh, fighting between a um, lot of groups. They, they, they fought with, you know, with cannons, you believe it or not, with, with automatic weapons. So I also witnessed that. So that was like very, very big chaos in the whole country, you know. Yeah, the, the reason I want to start on that is a lot of kids are listening right now. Probably about a, a quarter of the people listening to you are still in dental school and the rest are probably under 30. Uh, millennials, old people like you and I read books and journals and papers and they, they like internet. And a lot of them are playing a violin feeling sorry for themselves because they're graduating with $400,000 in student loans. I'm like, well, were you born and raised during the Cultural Revolution? I mean, these kids today that are, that, that are crying in their soup don't realize some of the horrors that the last generation lived through. Exactly, exactly. So I was really uh, fortunate. I was just one of the fortunate uh, person that actually I could, you know, through hard work to get education, college education, but my peers, you know, all these uh, middle school uh, kids, they, we went to the farm, uh, the majority, 99% of them did not get um, reasonable education. So right now they're all retired, you know, believe it or not, you know, retirement uh, uh, age for China is like 60 years, they're all retired. I'm still working hard, <laughs> so, so I feel happy, you know, I'm, I'm still contributing to the mankind contributing to the dentistry and the medicine. Well, you know, I want to ask you before we start is um, how do people like yourself remain positive through such hard times? I mean, you, you, I would give you so much credit if you just were depressed and, and a drunk and just, you know, just wallowing and, you know, how did you come out of this with such a positive, productive attitude? I think that's, there are a lot of factors. The, I think the major factor is that from my family background, for me, for me, is from my, my family background. So uh, the Xu family has a long, dis, uh, long history in the Chinese history. And um, so our family for several generations has been doing pretty well. My grandpa, um, and he also served for the government. And his, uh, his big brother, my grandpa, the big brother, was the president of China, uh, Mr. Xi Chang Xu. Uh, he was the president from 1918 to 1922. And so I have a lot of good role models to um, make sure that I need to grow up and tr contribute to uh, the people. And uh, so I was determined, you know, also I was uh, um, in such a harsh uh, situation during the time that uh, I lost hope almost. So I survived that labor camp, I survived the Cultural Revolution, and uh, I made made it to a higher education. Therefore, you know, for me, uh, I would say, you know, I was very, very focused and make sure that uh, I'll move forward 
and uh, make sure all these efforts um, will be benefiting the um, uh, the human population, especially for the Americans. And because um, I came over here as, as uh, a young man, and I received all these uh, support from American taxpayers, for you know, scholarship for for PhD, all these uh, taxpayers, and and then the grants we were funded, you know, millions from the uh, federal government. So I'm so appreciative for the uh, support. So I need to achieve a lot of things that in my goal. And uh, so we're, we're working hard. You know, we have a good team. So we're working hard to make sure that our product will be the best, will be most effective and to help people. Why do they call you the green tea doctor? <laughs> the, they call me the green tea guy. See, I'm drinking green tea all the time. It's not because of that. It's not because of green tea I'm drinking is the benefits of green tea that really helped me um, very, very early in the years when we, when we in the farm, because in the farm, there was no running water. There was no, um, you know, like a toilet system, you know. So we uh, we have been drinking all the dirty water um, that rain collected and all kinds of uh, whatever contaminations. Therefore, I, I was uh, severely ill and due to the um, probably the germs. And then the local farmers, local farmers, they just told me that you know you, you can drink something you know boiled this kind of leaves and boiled you know this this is the tea leaves. I was like, oh the tea leaves. So I was actually benefited from the green tea actually from green tea during very very early time that helped my um, my uh, diarrhea and the contamination. I really helped a little. So I have some uh, uh, really self uh, personal experience over the benefits. Therefore, I came over here 20 years ago, I came here and I studied the benefits of green tea compounds because green tea was created originally as a medicine in China. And later, a thousand years ago, a thousand years ago, it became a very popular beverage. Therefore, a lot of people, they just drinking this beverage. However, people, they did not forget it has medicinal benefits, but that benefits was a potential a need to be brought out. So that I was the one that um, really did a lot of work on the benefit of these compounds, how to make these compounds, make formulations for different variety of, of uh, uh, products and potentially drugs to help people. So because this is non-toxic and also is natural, and it also has a lot of multiple, multiple uh, benefits, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and anti-cancer, you, you name it. There's so many research, you know, about 10,000 publications already, you know, in the uh, PubMed, you can search. So um, I always think of the, United, of the uh, Western uh, Hemisphere, the Americas, as coffee drinking, and the Eastern Hemisphere, uh, Europe, Africa, and China is tea. Do, do you see uh, tea? Uh, rising up against coffee? Well, um, when you talk about the coffee, yeah, it's very popular uh, in the whole world, actually, in China and Japan, you know, you, you go anywhere, with the, even the tea drinking uh, countries, they, they adapted you know, a lot of coffee uh, because, you know, Starbucks, <laughs> you know, Starbucks opened everywhere you know, in China and Japan, you can find all the airport. However, tea drinking, actually increase year after year after year. And tea drinking, especially green tea drinking, has growing for um, multiple folds in certain countries, including the United States. There are a lot of import, uh, the green tea and other types of tea. Therefore, we see a very big increase in tea consumption in the United States. So that's a good thing. That's a very, very good thing combined with many other uh, behavior changes that we see the benefits can be uh, 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 received by people, the population, they consume tea, they consume green tea, they also they consume coffee. Coffee has some benefits too for cardiovascular and some other uh, uh, benefits. So Therefore, you know, we hope the population getting getting healthier and healthier. So you're um, talk about the journey of starting Camelex and what exactly does that name mean Camelex? Um, for a scientific name of the tea plants called Camellia 
sinensis. Therefore, we we're talking about how can we utilize the compound to convert that into products, medications to help people. Therefore, we use the first camellia and then we put an X at the last. X means prescription. You know, one day, some prescription drug will come. There is already one prescription drug from green tea compound. There are going to be more. So therefore, for green tea to be used in medicinal purpose, that's the name of camellix. Wow, that is, uh, I learned something uh, every day. So camellix, the name of your company is from Camellia senescus which is a species of evergreen shrub or small tree whose leaves and leaf buds are used to produce tea. White tea, yellow tea, green tea, dark tea, Absolutely. and black mm. tea are all harvested from one or the other, but are processed differently to attain varying degrees. Now, now talk about your journey of starting this company. Are you, um, what kind of green tea uh, products are you, are, I see uh, Mighty Flow, I see all kinds of different products. Um, what, mm -hmm. what are what are you um, what what green tea products are you selling? Uh, the first one that we have developed, the first one we have developed for the Mighty Flow product is the Mighty Flow dry mouth chewing gum. So that's the very first. And still, right now, this uh, this gum is like look like this. So this gum, so this gum is still. Um, selling very, very well and uh, so welcomed by the uh, people with xerostomia. So that's the first product developed. Um, I, I was serving as a consultant before Comedians was formed. But later on, our school, the tr technology transfer office, encouraged me to apply for some grants from the uh, state, the Georgia Research Alliance, to form a company that developed products based on our inventions, our patents. So in the beginning, I was you know, just like, oh, I, I'm a professor, oh, I, I'm teaching, I'm doing research, you know, I cannot be you know, like a business you know, uh, leader. But they, they encouraged me to try that. And uh, so we get the grant, we get our uh, formulation together and we became independent. And then we start our uh, product line. So the first product will be the, um, the, the dry mouth chewing gum and later we developed some very popular this is a very popular uh, lozenge too this is the lozenge Ex explain the, the name is it might is it might the mighty tea flow, flow? Yeah. the mighty flow right mighty flow the mighty flow right it is sold in many uh, different small pharmacies online Amazon and then we have the uh, see very small see this is a very small um, uh, bottle this is the uh, spray you can just for people very conveniently just uh, spray into their oral cavity and then a uh, big bottle so this is the uh, uh, the rinse also so we have we have the, the line of for dry mouths because with so many people that have dry mouths they don't know which one is best for them so we search a lot we have a dental team we have a, a dentist we have a statistician we have a pathologist we have all these experts put together to develop this formula and on top of that we put that formula into clinical trial in our dental school the dental college in Georgia and then after the the trial that we found actually the formula actually can restore, we're not talking about the stimulation, we're talking about restore the function, at least partially, of the salivary gland. That means unstimu unstimulated saliva is oh. elevated 400 uh, 400%, 400%. Fourfold increase in unstimulated saliva. This is this is something you know, unheard of. You know, you, you see a lot of products they can you know stimulate. Of course, it can stimulate. You chew a, a wax, it can stimulate. But for unstimulated saliva, this is the most needed saliva for people suffer from dry mouths because without without stimulation, you know, their saliva flow is very very slow. So only when they restore their salivary gland function, then they can improve their quality of life. That's exactly what we did. And then that's exactly what we published. So let, let's back up a little bit. Um, who suffers from dry mouth xerostemia? 
uh, the biggest population, biggest percentage in suffer from dry mouth are the people taking a lot of prescription medications. There are more than 400 medications. There are common medications that cause dry mouth. So if you, if you watch the commercials, at the end of the commercial, they say, oh, this product you know, could cause dry mouth. There are so many of them. And then there is a small population, like a one to three million of those people, they suffer from a disease called the Sjogren's syndrome. Those people, they have the most severe dry mouth because their salivary gland is attacked by their own immune system. Therefore, the function is lost. And then there's some population, like big population, there are cancer therapy, um, a patient, oncology patients, after therapy, chemo or radiation therapy on head and neck cancers, and they will suffer not only dry mouth, but other, other problems, the hair loss, um, um, different problems of, of uh, infections in the oral cavity. Well, well, if you go to Dentaltown, and um, there's a quarter million dentists on Dentaltown, and uh, our, we're coming up on our 20-year anniversary, the St. Patrick's Day, but if you do mm -hmm. a search for a Sojourn's Syndrome, you find um, – so many threads on children's syndrome. I wish you would go oh, on. Yes. I wish you would go on Dental Town, do a search for dry mouth, xerostomia, yes. Trojans, and post some of these videos. And I know what their first question is going to be: How does how does green tea uh, extracts from your um, company Camillix? How how does it actually treat xerostomia? Xerostomia, you know, is is something that people they feel that the mouth is dry. It's different than the salivary uh, gland dysfunction. So we, we call them xerostomia. So a lot of people that's put together. I give a lot of lectures, uh, a lot of CEs or to tell them you know, the differences. Some people, they, they feel dry, but actually they do not have a salivary dysfunction. But what we talk about is the people with reduced saliva flow. That's the big problem causing complications. So therefore, we did a lot of study. So first we did some cellular study, molecular study, and then we uh, eventually we stepped onto the animal models. We, we did three animal studies and based on the Sjogren's model that their salivary gland is attacked by uh, lymphocytic infiltration and then getting damaged. So therefore, that they, are, they are very, very close to uh, human Sjogren's uh, um, um, cases and pathology. Therefore, we found that, you know, before the onset of the disease, actually, their gland already had some changes. The DNA damage caused by free radicals uh, were apparent. And then the enzymes fighting these free radicals decreased. And eventually, eventually, they will lose the function little by little. So that's the problem in the uh, secretive gland, like the salivary gland, like the uh, pancreas, lacrimal gland. So the, all these glands getting attacked. Therefore, the animals actually drinking the compounds, drinking the compounds, had very, very little effect uh, compared to the animals that drinking only water. So we thought, wow. Something, something is happening to really keep the norm in the glands. You know, when when the compounds from green tea were introduced into into the animal models, therefore we believe that um, the compounds actually can really help with the glandular function. And we did a lot of further research on certain enzymes, certain signal transduction uh, uh, elements, and we found that was the case. Therefore, um, the, the group of us with Dr. Durasi, Dr. Oberki, Dr. Dickinson, and Dr. Looney, and so, so a big team, a big team. So we start to search for the um, actual formula. And we tried different combinations of natural compounds and other plant compounds. We tried, and then one of them, one of the formulation that really, really has a very prolonged, prolonged effect for salivary uh, flow rate. Therefore, we named that as mighty flow because the T is in the middle, and then the flow of saliva. So that come up, the uh, name and uh, the formula. 
Yeah, I've been reading a lot lately that uh, they're starting to find out now that everybody's um, donating their DNA and, and finding out their ancestry and they've got millions of samples that I've, I've read some papers that some researchers are finding out that these autoimmune disease tend to cluster mm-hmm. in families, especially um, um, like if someone in your like like type one uh, diabetes, arthritis, mm-hmm. celiac sprue, multiple sclerosis, right. hypothyroidism, Sjogren syndrome, that they're finding those in family trees. So there there has to be a genetic component then, wouldn't there? But there must be, yes. And I agree with you absolutely. And also you see the population difference too. And um, for example, the uh, type one, those type one, the, uh, the diabetes and also Sjogren's are high in Western countries but not very high in China. You see, that's a big difference. And that could be genetic, that could be environment, that could be the combination of genetic and environmental factors. And I think uh, in Japan, uh, you can see the similar trend too. Therefore, that you, you know, if you compare the green tea consuming population versus a non-green tea consuming population, you can see a lot of difference. And when these people come over here, so when these people, like the Asian people, the Japanese, Chinese people that come here in the U.S. and they are in the environment, and then you see those disease, a lot of different diseases, they increase, like, like breast cancer, just for example. So this is something that uh, scientists still try to unveil uh, um, the, uh, the cause and the mechanism, yeah. Um, when you say it's higher in, um, there's more autoimmune, like celiac sprue and all that in Western versus Eastern, some people link that because um, Westerners eat more wheat where Asians eat more rice and that there's a very big difference between wheat and rice as far as number of genes, uh, chromosomes, et cetera. Do you, do you think diet plays into that factor too? Absolutely. Diet is, is a big, big human behavior factor that between the Western and between the uh, population that consume different uh, diet uh, structures. Uh, but when you look into Japan, when you look at Japan, um, they have quite different diet um, uh, uh, system than, than us. And they stay that way. They don't change. You see, they really keep that way. So you can see the, the average you know, life expectancy, the different diseases, they are quite stable. But in China, after the Kentucky Fried Chicken opened in 1989 in Beijing. We saw huge change of everything. Now China has took over of the uh, biggest uh, obesity population in the world. China is number one now. Oh my gosh, so are you kidding me? Yeah, the, uh, and, and China took over the uh, type two diabetes, um, the, the absolute number uh, and the percentage of the world as number one. You see how fast, you know, 40 years, 40 years passed, and you see all these kind of a behavior changes led to the population's health status. So that is something really, really alarming. And in the US, you know, I'm the course director for nutrition. I'm trying to, you know, watch people, how they eat, how to exercise, how to move. And then uh, we see there's a trend, the cancer rate going down. You see that from the 1990s, the cancer rate going down in the US right now because of cessation of smoking. See, very, very simple change, very simple change of behavior will lead to disease statistic change and very significantly. So, uh, so we we still have a long way to go to uh, to study the environmental uh, impact um, uh, health of a particular population. Well, I think your company is on the right track because um, you know the one of the major differences I've seen uh, thirty years mm-hmm. after graduating dental school is is patients um, want to try something natural. They they are they're tired. Mm-hmm. They they they've lost trust in big pharma. I mean, uh-huh. I mean, you, you're you're an expert in viruses. I mean, I mean, did you ever think we'd be having measles outbreaks because? Millennials don't believe in uh, vaccination. This is shocking, right? Right. <laughs> this is a shocking. The measles now is is popping out. You know the outbreak in so many states in the U.S. and some other part in the world. So that's something that um, because people they ignored for a long time. Oh, measles. You know, well, we already have vaccinated. You know, the population has no problem. Well, 
they come back. You know, the virus, because I study virus a lot, virus, they are not stupid, you know? They are smart. They know, they know how to hide. For example, herpes. You cannot develop a herpes 2 vaccine. We spend so much money, so many, uh, so, so much time. They hide from your immune system, but if they come out, hey, they'll hurt you. And also, like like measles, you know, they just pop up. And the, for example, there's some other popular, uh, like norovirus. Norovirus, you know, every year in the United States, 21 million people get infected. And then every year, there, there was no reduction. We we have, uh, you know, all kinds of prevention uh, which uh, virus, guidelines. Which virus? Here. Norovirus. Norovirus. Noro is a, the cruise ship virus. Okay. R O uh, N O R O cruise ship um, virus norovirus. So our grant from NIH, so NIH has funded us 1.4 million dollars, you know, to study and to develop a approach using spray, hand sanitizer, and wipe that contains green tea compounds against norovirus to get rid of them. So that's the current project we're doing now. So you can see that these viruses, you know, they are not going away. You know, they can have all kinds of resistant strains coming out. You have a drug, they develop resistant. You have another drug, they will develop resistant. So sometimes people say, oh yeah, we, we, we can have vaccines, we develop new vaccines. Well, or you can see the flu, the flu vaccine, we have how many vaccines I have? And then the flu virus, they keep changing. And then we just, um, sometimes we'll, we'll miss them. You know, we have to pre predict for next year. So if, if prediction is wrong, then uh, the, the flu will become a pandemic like the last year, 19, uh, 2017, 2018, it's a pandemic. I, I always think it's funny when people, always, they always, you know, hu humans are always biased about themselves. Everything revolves around humans. And they always talk about what's the chance that humans will kill extinct each other in World War Three. It's like, dude, I think you have a much higher chance of getting extinct from a virus or a comet oh. hitting the earth than being than having all the humans kill each other. What do you think is more dangerous? Yeah. You know, I mean, they absolutely. say they say half of all the uh, hundred billion humans that ever lived died of malaria. Yeah, there are a lot of people dying from malaria too, and especially in, in those uh, uh, countries in Africa. But when we talk about the virus, when we talk about virus, yeah, 100 years ago, 100 years ago in Spain, that started in Spain, that killed like up to 50 million people. This is wiped them out. See, it's a flu virus. It's nothing special. It's a flu virus, but it's more, more uh, uh, pathological um, and cause more severe uh, problem. So we have something that really, really, the, the alarm is already a sound by the World Health Organization, and they listed the top 10 microorganisms that actually wipe humans out. All of them are viruses, if you check on that. And what, what was that list called? What, what was that list called? The, the top 10, what is it? The top 10 viruses? The, the top 10 germs that you know, that need a priority, that need top priority to develop uh, approaches to prevent and to treat. So World Health, I will, I will send you that information. I will send you that No, I wish you'd post it on Dental Town. Sure, yeah, I don't, will. Don't, there's a quarter million dentists on Dental Town and, um, Dental Town. and okay. I I'll never, uh, we're coming mm -hmm. up on our 20 year anniversary and I never would have thought 20 years ago when we started that dentists are posting mm -hmm. questions all the time. Uh, I mean, pedi pedi pediatric dentists are having problems where they mm -hmm. want to post signs that they don't want to treat your child if they're not vaccinated. But then other parents say, well, if my child's vaccinated, why do I care right. if the child next to me is unvaccinated? I mean, that's a legit question. What, what, exactly. what would you give Give a pediatric dentist verbiage to, uh, uh, if a well, first of all, do you recommend that a pediatric dentist not see children that are unvaccinated and then if an unvaccinated um mother child um's mother says 
Well, look, if Dr. Shu is vaccinated for measles, then why does he care if my kid isn't vaccinated or even has measles? Because if you if you have a vaccination for measles, why do you care that my kid is sitting next to you and he hasn't been vaccinated? That's a legit question that dentists are now starting to hear all the time. How would you answer that? I think uh, the best place to see uh, to seek a guideline is the CDC website. The CDC website has the best information to recommend for different age group, you know, for example, not only children, but also um, senior population and the regular population. So they do have very specific uh, uh, guidelines for healthcare settings or healthcare workers and uh, for the entire population. And also ethics plays an important role too, that, you know, whether you, you deny or whatever you, you, you must or whatever, all kinds of choices, the ethics and also CDC guidelines, that's very, very important. However, I would say for me, for me, I would say prevention is the key. Prevention, prevention, prevention. You know, you want, okay, to get rid of those germs before it enters in your body. That's the most important, most effective way. Because when we talk about oh, prevention, oh, vaccination. No, vaccination hey, is arguable you know, when we talk about prevention or not. Vaccination relies on infection to work. So that's something a lot of people, they don't know, they don't care. You know, vaccination without the infection, vaccination will not work, right? You agree with me, Howard? Because vaccination cannot prevent virus to infect you, but only prevent the symptom, either reduce or make it, you know, um, uh, a burden. So that's something that we focus on. We focus on prevention. We want to develop approaches to kill this virus before they, infect, uh, they, they can infect you. So that's something that uh, we're working on, um, supported by the NIH grant. So if uh, so, the dentists and hygienists listening to you today, if they have patients that have dry mouth, would they order Mighty Flow from your website, camelix.com, C-A-M-E-L, um, L-I-X. So it's basically Camel Licks, K C A M E L then lix.com would you recommend that they that the dental office orders the mighty flow and dispenses it to the patient or just give them the the name of the website and the the consumer orders it off of your website or is it available on amazon.com or yeah amazon prime they can order from amazon prime for the patients however when you get onto the comedics.com you hit on professional and then from that button that you can reach the company for free samples that can send to your clinic and for your patient to try and for you to try for free. You see, that's something that uh, uh, I think people can take advantage of because we really want people to know that this type of natural product that went through clinical trial and shows a restoration of salivary gland function and help people with their uh, saliva flow and, and help, help to manage their dry mouth. Okay, so you, can, also, so you can get you see free, this. Yeah, so if you go to, just think of uh, Camel Licks. So Camel, C-A-M-E-L, <laughs> then Licks, L-I-X. Then he's got a button uh, there, professionals, to request free samples. Oh. Also, see, this is the new sanitizer, hand sanitizer that is placed in every single dental unit in our dental school, hundreds of them. So our entire dental school only uses this sanitizer, protective sanitizer. Why? There are twofold of benefits. First, we know alcohol that really can hurt your skin, dry your skin and make it irritant, and this one does not have that kind of effect. Second, regular, regular uh, alcohol sanitizer, they only can claim to kill bacteria, bacteria and some viruses. However, with the compound active green, uh, active EGCG, this sanitizer can kill a lot of nasty viruses. So that's the advantage, the two-fold advantage that we have. So now we're developing 
uh, try to uh, develop a whole line of this type of products. So you, it says on your website that um, protect, uh, I, I, protect I, protect, uh-huh. protect TV, right? Protect uh-huh. TV. Um, I, I love your your names. Your 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 marketing is very good. You work you work T into all these deals. So T all these things, right, right, right. So um, yeah. you you said it on the um, active EGCG, lethal viruses. Uh-huh. What what is EC EGCG? EGCG is one of the compounds that are present in large amount in the tea leaves. But in order for them to be active against the virus, that needs a technology to make certain uh, make certain uh, process. So this is the protected technology that we per, uh, uh, possess, and uh, we have already patented that technology. Therefore, it's not only in the in the uh, uh, sanitizer, but also you can see from the uh, um, the cold sore treatment of VertX. So that's the cold sore treatment right here. You can see. Okay, that. so so we've talked about we've talked about Protect TV. We've talked about Mighty yep. Flow, but that one was um, a Vertex, a VertX, a Vert, a VertX. Yes. Okay, talk about so that. A VertX uh, came out came out also also utilized this technology, the active EDCG, that technology, and also went through a phase two clinical trial for cold sore patients. Because I used to get a lot of cold sore because of stress, because of traveling, and so, so I always try to use one very popular cold sore, a uh, very small tube, and and then it did not work very well. It did not work very well. So since our research showed it has so high efficacy against the virus, so we we tried, we tried to formulate and then we tried a clinical trial, and we found. The result was really, really shocking. The result actually uh, shortened the episode from a median of nine days to 4.5 days. And we published that uh, result on Triple O, everybody knows, that's the oral medicine magazine. And also um, we look at the, the blister and ulceration time duration, and we can actually shorten that from uh, three days to one day. Therefore, when you use that, uh, 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 medication actually you can um, stop blister within one day uh, on average on average so that's something that we we're very very uh, excited about it therefore from from which we want to develop uh, prescription drugs for all kinds of uh, uh, problems like like um, the uh, genital herpes and um, and also we wanted to look at you know whether the flu um, flu can be uh, can be addressed you know, because the flu pandemic is so terrible. So we want to see whether we can develop some um, control methods for prevention of flu. We, we, we started the show talking about Chairman Mao's and the Cultural Revolution. I don't think most people around the world realize that the um, the Spanish influenza during the time of World War One actually killed more people than all of World oh, War One. Exactly. Yeah, fifty million, up to fifty million people get killed. Yeah. And 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 it's, it's uh, but anyway, let's go back to the cold war because it's a very um, it's a very well, we're social animals, and people feel so conscious when they have a cold sore. I mean, some people literally don't even want to go to school or going to work. So oh, right yeah. now, in, in the thirty mm-hmm. years I've practiced, what do you think was the most common treatment for a cold sore? What, what do you think most dentists are treating it with? today? I think the first, we have to recognize the dental professionals, to them, cold sore or herpes labialis, herpes stomatitis, this type of open sore pose a hazard to dental professionals. We need to be very careful. Every time I go for a CE, we just tell them, you know, got to be very, very careful. Not only touching, but also aerosol could, you know, pass if you have a wound. There are many, many reports on that. So that's the first one. The second one, the cold sore must be addressed because cold sore is a herpes virus that popping out when you are under stress, your immune system get a little uh, uh, reduced. So cold sore will, will come out, you know, different places, especially on your lips and also inside the oral cavity. So it, it is a self-healing uh, uh, disease, 
that will probably will complete each episode within 10 and 14 days. But that's a long time. The long time and looks very bad. So right now the approach is to how to deal with that episode to reduce them. So there are many, many antiviral drugs that people can prescribe and people they can um, put on their uh, either, either topical or systemic use. And these drugs, from what I can see, their efficacy is very weak. Okay, it's very weak for, for some simple topical uh, applications. It's not very strong. Systemically, infusion, they can be very strong. However, what they cause, they cause side effects. They can have some kind of uh, um, kidney problem too. But the biggest factor risk is to induce the virus to mutate, to mutate. That become a bigger problem. Now we, we are producing super bugs, super virus. That's something that we need to be very careful, just like antibiotics. You're too much antibiotics and you're producing, you're inducing super bug. Now we have MRSA, we have you know, multiple resistant bug that are coming around, you cannot even control. Therefore, virus, same thing. We already isolated so many different strains that are resistant to antivirus. Not only from herpes, but also flu virus, and they have un uh, resistant strains too. So let's be very, very careful. The advantage of our technology is that our product, using the compound, the active uh, EGCG, this compound works on multiple mechanisms. It's not only for one pathway or one molecule or one enzyme. The virus can mutate anytime. But we have this compound that work on multiple mechanisms. These are all published data, which is that everybody can, can check. This way, these viruses, they have no way to develop resistant. They just die. So that's why the cold sore medication, the, the uh, BERT-TX, that works so well, and you can see the reviews, you can see the Amazon, or, or you can look at our publication on Triple O, you can see that it worked so well on this virus. You don't have to worry about you know, uh, um, side effect, you don't have to worry about environmental um, uh, pollution, you don't have to worry about the, the virus to, to mutate. So that's something that advantage that people uh, should take. Um, there's a thread on Dentaltown. In fact, it was a uh, it's a very popular thread this month. It's one of the articles about one hygienist saying that when she has a patient that comes in with a cold sore, she wants to uh -huh. reschedule them. And of course, the dentist is thinking, well, I, I have overhead. I can't pay you forty dollars an hour to reschedule a patient with a cold sore. Where where do you weigh in on that? Well, according to the guidelines, that all I can say, according to the guidelines, depends on the size of the of the, the the lesion, and depends on you know whether that can be uh, contained. So the dentist make decision. But if I am that uh, dentist, if I am that the dentist, if I look at the cold sore, is is the is that outbreak? It has um um. I don't see the viral shading is very, very uh, uh, apparent. I probably will suggest that patient will come back after the sore is uh, taken care of because that pose a threat, a risk to everybody in the clinic. Um, there are many publications on that. There are many publications on that. You, 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 can, uh, you can see that. So you talked about mighty flow. We revitalize a Vertex, uh, you still have uh, another product. Um, you, you have four products. Um, the, uh, that was the um, hair, hair loss, care. hair care. Yeah. Um, I wasn't yeah. gonna cover that today since I don't have any care, any hair, so I don't think it means anything to me, but just in case someone's listening that has hair, uh, talk about your hair product. <laughs> yeah, the, the hair product was also among the earliest uh, uh, product that we launched. And basically, it takes advantage of the antioxidant properties of the green tea compounds, plus another plant 
compound that can help with the hair follicles. So therefore, that we developed the compound for two purposes. And um, see, one of them, one of them is for the, uh, right, right here, this is the blue bottle. Okay, so this one is for hair loss. Especially right now, a lot of cancer patients, after they um, went through uh, therapies and they have hair loss, they can actually use that uh, to wash their hair. And the other type is the blue bottle, that's the uh, uh, for dandruff. The dandruff, also we know that a lot of caused by the um, um, immune system problems and the uh, uh, overgrown of the uh, epidermis and the shedding of these uh, skin cells. So that's the inflammation. Therefore, we use natural anti-inflammation to uh, combat this type of problems. So we have uh, uh, this uh, pro uh, product line to address in the way, natural way, the plant extracts and also we pick all the ingredients according to the standard of the um, environmental working group website. So the website, they have all these kind of uh, uh, compounds they analyze, all these kind of ingredients for the um, uh, shampoo. So we choose non-toxic green compounds. So therefore, we develop that uh, uh, hair care products to control of dandruff, and also to help people with uh, thinning hair. So I use them, I use them every day. I actually, I use all these products um, from time to time. Um, but I use the shampoo every day. I use the sanitizer every day. So that's something. Uh, and, and you I got think, the you got the dental school to put the hand sanitizer. The entire, yeah, the entire dental school, hundreds, well, have more than four, 400 dental chairs, 400 dental units, and many, many offices, hundreds of offices, they, they all use our uh, sanitizer. Because sometimes, sometimes, there's one, there's one staff, I tell you the story, the one staff, on her desk, it has our sanitizer, which is provided by the school, and another sanitizer. I said, hey, why are you using another sanitizer? She said, hey, your sanitizer is so gentle. I don't believe he's gonna kill the, <laughs> the bugs. I use the tough one that really, you know, really dry my skin. Oh, that must be working for the bacteria. Uh, I said, well, and it, this is the purpose that we want a good sanitizer and get rid of the bugs. Then she believed because publications, we have all these publications out and that you can check on that. Well, I, I still have patients that only want to swish their mouth with Listerine because it burns and feels like, you know, exactly. they've just been yeah. uh, that tortured. Actually, yeah, that actually can, can, can cause cancer, you know, from some studies. You, you alcohol, think, high alcohol contact, content. And do you think it's the high alcohol content on the oral tissue or the fact that um, if, if you're an alcoholic, you destroyed so much of your liver um, do, do, do you think do, do you think they're mixing out drinking alcohol with rinsing alcohol on tissues or do you, do you think do you think Listerine on oral tissue by itself is carcinogenic? Yes, from study, see when we talk about a study, we'll talk about evidence-based dentistry. So evidence-based dentistry, we, we could see a lot of evidence. We could see a lot of evidence that alcohol, is a factor, is one factor, one of the factors associated with oral cancer, okay? Tobacco is another one. When you combine them, it's getting worse. So the alcohol um, content is very high, like the old Listerine. The old Listerine has very high content of alcohol. They, they, have, they have low alcohol now, they have non-alcohol now, I think it's much better. So any alcohol content too high, you know, more than 10%, that may not be a good option, may not be a good option. So that's from scientific evidence we see that. That could lead to um, increased risk of oral cancer. And what do you, um, a lot of the dentists that are as old as me, uh, when, when they see someone with a cold sore, they're still um, thinking a cyclovore. What would you say to someone who thinks, uh, who's listening to you saying, for your 
um, you know, to stop blisters, talk about a uh, Veritex versus a Cyclovir. Yes, a Cyclovir uh, is the oldest antiviral that's been used for decades against uh, certain uh, viral infections, and either can be taken systemically or can be used as ointment or, or gel um, um, topical uh, applications. And their clinical study showed, the clinical study of a cyclovir showed the topical application of a cyclovir can reduce the episode by, you know how, how long? Less than a day. Reduce the entire episode by less than a day. Hey, the people one day for them can be can be you know making a big difference, but the VTX in our clinical trial data showed can reduce the episode by four point five days. I think that's a big difference. I think you could change a lot of minds just going to. I mean, you basically um, you basically right right now you have four products: Mighty Flow, Re Revitalize. A Vertex Pro TV. Um, you should get on Dental Town and do a search for uh, these uh, cold sores, uh, fever uh, blisters, right. and, and tell them what you know because it's not like you're um, some salesman from a company. I mean, you're you're from a, you're you're a PhD from a dental school. You, you should really come We're, on and uh, educate them because evidence based. Yeah, you're yeah, evidence based. Evidence based. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so you have four products now. What's going to be your fifth product someday? Um, now someday, I think we are projected to launch the next product that's going to be the virucidal spray against norovirus and germs. So that's going to be very exciting. So this is the product that we are developing, supported by the National Institute of Health. That we're in the we're in the stage. Uh, try to finalize that, and then the need to get approval by EPA, by EPA. And then when you look at these sprays, when you look at the sprays in your dental office, in, on the surface, you know, to, to clean them, and then you see there are sprays that claim to kill germs and viruses, norovirus, whatever. But you need to be very careful. You need to be careful, look at their contents. So that's all I can say. You know, I don't want to say too much. You can you can see their their ingredients. You can see their pH. You can see their um, uh, compounds in there. So that's something that we are developing. Something so natural that will not hurt anything. Will not have a corrosive um, uh, effect on material but also has very, very high efficacy against the norovirus and some other viruses and, and then bacteria. So that's very exciting. We're, we're developing that. And also we'll talk about um, another product is the wipe. So the wipe that you can do that, uh, the same purposes. You know, when you're talking about um, your hand sanitizer lotion, everything I'm reading is telling me that my smartphone is probably filthier than my hands. Um, is that is your hand sanitizer something we, when you put it on your hand sanitizer? Do you think people should pick up their smartphones and rub it on the smartphone or what? When the when the spray come out, that could be very very good. But the smartphones, um, I think, is clean. Actually, it's cleaner than than your keyboard probably. <laughs> Seriously. Okay. The keyboard accumulated a lot of stuff that because you do not clean them. See, I do not clean them um, you know, every day. But your smartphone, sometimes you clean them, you wipe them out, you use some certain wipes. So the wipes can really uh, clean them pretty well. But your keyboard, you know, make sure doorknobs and there's so a lot of places that people touch that they have a lot of German. When you go to the gym, see, I go to the gym uh, uh, very frequently. And I see people, they're using different wrong products. You know, I, I have to say, you know, more education are needed. When you go to the gym, all these equipment that you do, right? And what, what, what they do, you know, they, they do not clean their hands. They clean those equipment. It's useless. You, you clean the equipment, you first, you make sure you, you, your hands are clean. That's the most important before you touch anything. 
Yeah, so long ago. Um, is there anything we didn't talk about today that you uh, that I wasn't smart enough to ask you about? Is there any any other areas you want to talk about? I think you have uh, covered a lot, and um, I think for the dental office, the dental settings, okay, is a confined place usually, and also a lot of crowds and the people traffic all over the place, that we need to be uh, really, really uh, uh, careful about infectious disease. We need to keep in mind, it doesn't matter the measles, it doesn't matter is flu uh, or herpes, labialis, but there's something we cannot see. For example, HPV, we cannot see them uh, you know, from people, their oral cavity, when you open up, when you t take an oral exam, and you don't see any lesion. However, when, you pr you know, when, when you're doing your procedure, this patient may have a viral shedding. They do not have any symptom. So you need to be very careful about the PPE, you need to be very careful about, about your hand piece, and the suck, especially the suction piece. Uh, make sure aerosol okay, does not go to you or go to your assistant or some other patients. And then make sure the cross-contamination of your dental chair, of your dental you know, surface, and your waiting room, all these places that we need to be very careful. Because when you have a, a, a norovirus outbreak in your office, then you will have some big tasks. You have to report to CDC, you have to do all kinds of things under the guidelines. You have to clean up, and you know, you have to stop. So a lot of things that you know, we need to be very careful. And then uh, uh, we need to, because the dental professionals, we're in the front line. We, we see symptoms first. We know the uh, uh, people, we meet them every six months, it's not like they're physicians. So we need to be very, very uh, careful. Well, um, you just mentioned, uh, I, I was gonna um, let you finish with that, but now you just open up another question I gotta ask you in overtime. <laughs> um, you know, dentists don't like being called a dentist. They, they wanna be a, a physician of the oral mouth, a doctor of the mouth. But you oh, see, yes, but you don't mm -hmm. see them really behind um, vaccinations for um, HPV like Gardasil, I mean, there's, there's thousands of dentists listening to you right now who have never even talked to their patient about Gardasil. If you're really going to be a physician of the uh, oral cavity, um, doesn't the HPV vaccination have to be part of your routine conversation? Well, at least we need to review the chart. We need to review the patient's history and to see whether at, at their teenager time, you know, they were vaccinated or not. And if we're not, you know, that could be, you know, something because the HPV population is getting bigger and bigger, and um, some other uh, viral infections getting bigger and bigger. For example, the uh, herpes, the herpes, you know, even herpes two, herpes two, herpes one, and but HPV is the most dangerous one that's associated with um, oral cancer and some other uh, uh, sites. So oral cancer is now it's definitely uh, associated with HPV, especially uh, the 16, the 18, some other uh, strains. So that need to be really, really look at it. And then if, if you pay attention to the patient history, and then, then you, you, you'll be more uh, better prepared. Well, I tell you what, this has been an amazing show. I can't wait. I hope you get on Dental Town and bring up everybody's uh, education on this. Um, it's Dr. Stephen Chu, PhD, professor of oral biology, founder of Camelex, Mighty Flow, Revitilize, Avertiax, and Pro TV. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. And if you ever have uh, more information, uh, you're, you're always welcome to come back on the show because you know so much about this stuff. Thank you so much uh, for all that you've done. My, my final question, do you ever get back to China? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, we do have some uh, business that uh, link to China because the technology of green tea originated from China. So we try to take advantage of that. And uh, so we do have some uh, business link over there. Yeah, well, I think one of the most fun lectures I ever gave was uh, in Shenzhen. Um, my gosh, uh -huh. that's a modern, uh, modern dental labs in Shenzhen. I think they have 4,000 right. employees and I got to tour all over China. Oh my gosh, what an, an amazing country. <laughs> um, it is just uh, beyond amazing. But thank you so much uh, for coming on the show today. It was an sure. honor to podcast interview you.